Hi YouTube, Engineer Boy 100. Today's video is an attempt at explaining a thought process that I went through in diagnosing a recent misfire issue that I had with the Porsche 996 Turbo. The misfires were very specific. They were on cylinders 3 and 6 only, consistently, over the replacement of spark plugs, the replacement of coils, it continued to be a miss on 3 and 6. There are three cornerstones of information that are required to solve a problem like this efficiently and they are you need to know the maintenance history of the vehicle, you need to understand the configuration of the platform, the flat 6 engine and the fuel system and you need to have a fundamental knowledge of how air, fuel, and spark are delivered to the cylinders and specifically in the particular flat platform that you're trying to diagnose. So when my uh, misfires first started, the first thing I did was go to the forums and I specifically Facebook uh, Porsche Turbo Group and ask them, you know, what should I start with in changing to solve this misfire issue? So without doing a lot of, of uh, brainstorming, a lot of you know, thinking it through, um, they suggested that I change the mass airflow meter. So I did that. I got a brand new mass airflow meter, changed it out, cleared the codes, and off I go. Well, within two or three days, the codes came back, and they were still three and six. So I was like, okay, wait a minute, I gotta think this through. Um, I don't think it's air, because air would be distributed to all of the cylinders. It would be random, it would be, you know, cylinder one, cylinder three, cylinder six, cylinder five. It wouldn't be consistent, because it's not controlled. And by controlled, I mean it's not dedicated. There's no air supply dedicated to each individual cylinder like there's a spark plug to one cylinder there's a coil to one cylinder so that led me to the old mechanics default for whenever there's a misfire it's a spark plug so i've eliminated air yes yeah, it's not air related i'm not going to check any more air related components of the engine i'm going to focus on spark because spark plugs and coils are specific to cylinders so I didn't know the history of the car's um, tune-ups and spark plug and coil changes, and I'd had it for a few years and I'd never changed it. So I said it was a good that was a good place to start. It's not that expensive, not that difficult to do. Change out the spark plugs and change out the coils. So I did that. Change out the plugs, change out the coils, and cleared the codes and I drove the car. Two or three days later, code came back. Three and six misfires. So I showed the guys um, on the forum what I'd done. I showed them the coils I used, and immediately said, hey, those are cheap aftermarket coils. I thought they were high performance coils at the time. But no, in fact, they were cheap aftermarket coils. So I said, okay, well, what should I do? They said, OEM, Beru, coils is what you need. So what did I do? Went down, got out of the car, changed the coils out again. I didn't change the plugs because I just put brand new plugs in. So I changed out the coils, brand new burglar coils, OEM, put it back together, cleared the codes, and off I go. Two or three days later, codes came back. Three and six, misfires. Okay, so now I'm like, it's not, it's not spark, because I'm confident now that the plugs are good, I'm confident that the spark plugs are good, there's no way, it's very unlikely that I would get coils on three and six misfiring on my original coils, coils three and six misfiring on the first set of new coils I put in, and coils three and six misfiring on, on the brand new Buru coil. There's just no way. Statistically, it's, it's almost impossible. So I ruled out Spark. So now all I'm focusing on is fuel. So what are the easiest and most logical components to start with, with fuel, three that I came up with. The uh, fuel pump relay, 
the fuel pressure regulator, and the fuel pump itself. So I want to start with the cheapest of those and the easiest to access. That was the fuel pump relay. I changed it out, I cleared the codes, and off I go. I drove the car for about a week, codes didn't come back. I drove for another week, codes didn't come back. I drove the car for four weeks, and finally, the codes came back. Three and six. So I'm like, oh, I'm at a loss here. I've changed the, the, the plugs, I've changed the coils, I've changed the fuel pump relay. And the reason I changed the fuel pump relay is because I tested it and I found some resistance in the old fuel pump relay and I had never changed it before, so I changed it. So I'm still convinced that it's fuel related. And because it's three and six, I think it has to do with something to do with fuel being turbulent inside of the fuel system for some reason. So what I did was I did a fuel pressure test to make sure that the fuel pump was running smoothly and it was putting out enough pressure. And it was. Fuel pump ran flawlessly. So I did another fuel pressure test with the engine running. The first one was with the engine off. The second one was with the engine running and I observed the gauge and the needle was fluctuating violently. And that told me there was something in the system that was not allowing the fuel to run smoothly, laminar flow, which was just needed so that you can have consistent fuel delivery when the, when the fuel injector is open. So that told me it's probably the fuel pressure regulator. So I went ahead and change the fuel pressure regulator. I went through all of the vacuum lines at the time, the vacuum line that goes to the fuel uh, pressure regulator and put everything back together and it ran like a dream. Been driving it three times a day. Before I was driving like two or three times a week and the mid-rides were coming back. This time with the fuel uh, pump relay and the fuel pressure regulator change. I've been driving it three times a day just to see if the misfires come back. Nothing's come back. And additionally, the I think the computer takes some of the power away when there's misfires because now that everything has smoothed out, the car seems way more powerful and to the point where my clutch is slipping. And now I have to drop the engine and change the clutch, which is good and bad. Thanks to DJ Marski's tune, I now have to change my clutch because it can no longer hold, you know, the five between five and six hundred horse that it has now. So anyway, the misfires are fixed. These are the steps that we went through. We did the coils and plugs. On you know, this is a simple flow chart to show uh, the steps that I went through. Um, check the coils and plugs. Change them. Yes. Misfires fixed. No. The second. Question uh, diamond, it's first fixed, and uh, go in and change the fuel pump relay, did that. Fuel uh, pressure regulator, did that. And if that didn't clear, the next thing was gonna be fuel pump. But, misfires were fixed at question uh, diamond three, done. Now you can see what we'd plan to do next, but we already did the mass airflow meter, so it's a little out of, uh, out of order, out of sequence of what we actually did. But there were other things that we were going to check and then if all of that was exhausted, I would go ahead and ask the group again. But we're all done. I'm a happy camper. And thank you for watching.